Uh, my name is Robbie. The day that Johnny died, uh, a truck had been pulling in the driveway. And I have a very long driveway. And Berkey started flipping out because he was a protector. And I went out to just make sure that Berkey wasn't going to eat anybody. So when I opened the door to go through the back porch, I found Johnny in the back porch hanging. And I kind of lost my cookies. Uh, the guy in the driveway, he was the meter reader. He came to meet, read the meter. And uh, I ran outside and I said, please help me. I did the suicide going on. He said, now, and I said, yes, now. And he came in with me. He was dialing 911 as we were walking into the door. Uh, he said, get a knife. I got a knife. Um, I held Johnny Well, he cut him down. And he was on the phone with 911. And I took Johnny out into the backyard and laid him down in the backyard. 911 was asking, do you know CPR? And I was just, all I could say was he's purple and he's stiff. Rigor mortis has already set in. He's gone. There's no CPR. You met Johnny driving taxi? Yeah, I met Johnny driving taxi uh, several times. I met the family. I met Carol as well, his mother. And yeah, I just always have kept in touch with Johnny. And about a year ago, Johnny was in a very bad situation. Uh, he, had, he was sleeping on the streets. He was cold. He was wet. He looked like a skeleton. And he said, will you help me? And I said, of course I'll help you. Wouldn't it be a little inhumane not to help you? So I let him move in. Uh, when he moved in, he was a drug user, IV. Uh, heavy in that, well, all drugs. Um, with right away he had stopped using needles. I don't want needles in my house. I was very clear about that, and he had respected that. So immediately there was no needles. Within a month he had stopped using meth. He had a lot of demons to deal with, and he did. He got through it. Um, about two months ago, he was able to wean him off the boxing, and he did that on his own. So Johnny was the proudest boy in the world. He gained 40 pounds, he looked really good, and he had conquered everything he wanted to. So watching Johnny battle his addiction and have some success in his recovery, um, what, did, what did it teach you about... Uh, what addicts go through, and is there any misconceptions that you think people have about people that struggle with their... Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They're dehumanized. They're rejected. They're harassed. They're, you know, their life is hard, really hard. Is it hard for them to gain people's trust back just because of their, you think, just because of their... Extremely, control? yeah, because that stigma is always labeled with them, with whether it be police, whether it be stores, whether it be, you know, any, anything they have to deal with is hard already for them to do. And they're already not feeling good about themselves. So, and that makes it even harder. But Johnny built confidence and he was, he was quite comfortable. He was so proud of himself. Him and Barky had a, spe a special bond and he, he used to go out in the backyard and play football and whatever. He spent a lot of time with the dog. Uh, he did not want to go into the city because every time we went in, it was kind of thrown in his face. You know, there's three people everywhere, homeless people everywhere. City does really, what do they do? And uh, yeah, he, he was avoiding the city to try not to get sucked back into it. Um, probably about a month, month and a half ago, uh, he did go out. Where I live is kind of in the middle of nowhere, and there's not a lot back there. Yes, he had the dog, and yes, he had things he could do, but he was getting cabin fever. 
and he went out and he ran into people he knew. I don't know what happened, but he ended up using again. And the next day, he said, I need to go back to detox. So I took him back over to detox. Uh, I do believe that program needs help also. And he did the program, he did the week, and he came out again. But when he came out, all the demons were back. Uh, the people in the trees, the people are watching me. Uh, Johnny had medical disorder anyway regarding his brain. And he... What do you think he needed at that moment? At that moment, he needed to be able to go somewhere and talk to a psychiatrist and be able to vent and get guidance how to get back on track. Uh, he was calling his doctor. It wasn't working out so well for him. Uh, but it was getting worse and worse. And he did get back into drugs uh, within about the last week. What do you suppose caused that? He was doing so well, what do you think, what do you think caused a relapse? I think... Not having support as well? Ha not having support. He, he didn't... He had nowhere to go. He had nobody to talk to. He could only talk to us so much. We were a little hard on him, uh, you know, but we had to be. Um, he needed guidance elsewhere and had absolutely nowhere to get it. And that was a huge factor. Um, he needed help. What do you think could have prevented what happened? If Johnny had support, uh, the city provides nothing, absolutely nothing. They, we need drop-in center where they have a TV area. They can sit and talk amongst themselves. They need to know there's other options out there and shown. A lot of them don't know how to do what needs to be done to get yourself on track, you know. If they need a resume, a lot of them, what do I do, you know? Go to Manpower. They will do everything for you. And a lot of the stuff is that easy to the resolve. They just need help with doing it. They don't know where to turn. So they need a resource center. They need a resource center. Yeah. They need a drop-in center. They need to be able to vent. They need to be able to talk amongst themselves in an area where they're not, get out of here, you know? They need an form their own community to support. Yeah, what I would like to see in a drop-in center is not to tell them what to do, but show people there is options, you know. I would like to have a kitchen. So if they're hungry, they could come in and eat rather than going and stealing. Just basic humane resources, you know. Uh, as I said, if they want resumes, let's go get your resume. There's some services in town that are very, very good. But the homeless people, if they're on their own, they're kicked out or they don't know how to go, they don't know where they are, they don't have the confidence to go on their own. So, yeah, I would like to, what, what they need, okay, let's go get it, right? We, I formed a, a Facebook group and it's called Johnny Wants to Help. And there's a lot on there. Uh, People are posting their comments and what they're dealing with and why this needs to happen. Uh, I'm getting people contacting me, do you need donations? I'm not a rich man, but yeah, I'm getting donation offers. I'm refusing everything as of now, but yeah. Oh, I went for a haircut yesterday at Christie's and they wouldn't even charge me at Christie's. Um, but yeah, the support that I'm getting, there's also a lot of... Uh, members that are in the group that remain anonymous because of their situation or who they work with. And that's, that's acceptable. Uh, the numbers are what really matter, the, the posts, the numbers. So if you want to post anonymously, absolutely go ahead. It's not censored, and I'm not holding back. I'm a little aggressive, as you will see, but I think it needs to be done. It needs to happen, and it needs to happen now. There's no excuse why this can't be looked after.